This style of crystal radio has a lot of benefits. I mean, it's easy to build. You can make it out of scrap parts. You only have to buy the uh, diode, the resistor, and the earpiece, and the rest of it, uh, I mean, it's like a bicycle spoke and obviously an old piece of plumbing pipe and a scrap of wood. This is, this is really easy to make, and it works really well. Uh, there's a couple areas for improvement, and let's talk about that. The biggest room for improvement on this style of radio is with the uh, tuning. Part of it is the mechanics of the tuning rod. It's uh, because of the geometry here and the way this is set up. It's kind of unavoidable that the uh, mechanics are, are a little bit rough. Uh, I've explained in some other videos that you can see the rod bends and then it snaps back and so on. Um, so the mechanics of it is one issue. And the other issue with the tuning is that this style of radio, when there's a strong signal in the area, you'll get a lot of crosstalk. It'll dominate the other channels around it. The selectivity is not great. So there are some solutions to this. I'll show you uh, one of the things that I did uh, to uh, do a little better job of that. In another video I showed how this radio was made. Um, and this is quite a bit different style. It has two uh, air type capacitors in here. And it, it works very well. The selectivity is very good. Uh, the uh, tuning is a little bit trickier because you have two things to tune instead of just the, the wiper. And also, the drawback of this is that uh, it's a little quieter than this radio over here. So, uh, this is a big improvement. However, uh, quieter, oh, and I forgot to mention, the price is higher because of these two air type capacitors, which are, by the way, becoming harder and harder to buy. Uh, they haven't been used in radios for decades, and so uh, surpluses are running out, and they're just hard to find nowadays. So, this is a good choice, but uh, I think that I've got a better design that combines the best of this and this. The first experiments I did to uh, improve this design, I have another video where I built one of these, a very similar design, where I used a pedestal here and raised this rod to change the geometry a little bit, and that was a good change. Um, the other thing, it was the crosstalk and the ability to select signals, and what I started to do is I got this coil and as you can see, I, I just made this out of a scrap of pipe. It's the same size as this other one, like this. And I put 10 turns over here on that side, and then I put 20 turns here. Somebody had told me that if you use a loosely coupled antenna, it works better, and so I thought I would give that a try. So instead of hooking the antenna directly to this coil, like uh, in this design, I hooked my antenna and my ground to these coils, and this is actually just two separate coils. I did this for convenience. I had a scrap of pipe, so I put 10 here and 10 here. And I'm, what I wanted to see is if I put it like this and use this coil, what would be the result? Then if I uh, flipped it this way and tried the 10 farther away, because some people said spacing was important, so I tried that. Then I tried the 20 up close and then the 20 far away to see how this loosely coupled antenna thing would work. So my new design took into account the uh, increased uh, tower height right here of the antenna tuner to get rid of the problem of the geometry. It also took into account my findings when I used the loosely coupled antenna connection. And it also took into account the uh, better selectivity of having a built-in antenna tuner. So those aspects I have put into the new radio. Let's go take a look at that. Let's compare the actual radio with the circuit diagram. And the first thing to notice here on the diagram is the radio is actually two separate circuits. So we have this upper circuit that I am circling and then we have the lower circuit here. Uh, let's begin up here. We'll start at the earphones. That's easy to find. This is a good landmark. So here is the earphone. It comes down to this uh, resistor, which we see over here. If we follow the circuit on around, here is the diode. And here is the diode over here. 
continue on around. It's hard to see. The wire goes this way. It runs up the side of this block. Uh, sorry, it runs underneath the block and then up the side of the block. You can see it here and it connects to the wiper. Here it is. Connects to the wiper. The wiper comes over here, touches the coil. Uh, this shows 80 to 150 turns. The actual coil over here is about 110 turns. I think I would do more. I think I would go to 150 turns. Uh, this was an experiment and uh, I put too many turns on this side and not enough on this side. So that's uh, put that out there right now. Okay, so that's it for this upper part of the, of the uh, circuit. We have covered this down to the blue line here, around here. Okay, so let's look at the bottom part of the circuit. Start at the antenna. The antenna comes down here and contacts the coil. On this radio, that's this connection. It connects here to the coil and runs across here where it touches the wiper. And here we have run across until we touch the wiper. The wiper goes to here. Follow the wiper down over here. Contacts this. Wire runs down the side underneath to the ground point. Wiper runs here to the ground point. Um, and a footnote here, the space between these two here, this blue line, is about five turns of wire that I, uh, actually this was fully wound and I stripped away five turns. Okay, so that's uh, our comparison of the actual radio versus the circuit diagram. Let's uh, talk about some construction notes on this. Uh, we'll do some close-ups, but first we'll, we'll take the big picture things. You can see that, uh, first of all, these wipers are straight. There's no angle to them. There's no bend. That's because of these towers. The tower is about one centimeter shorter than the height of the coil. So that's the trick there. There's a little bit of downward pressure, but not a lot. And that really helps the smoothness of, the, uh, of moving the wiper. Okay, so that's the towers and the wiper blades. Uh, the coil here is three inch piece of pipe. You can see that there's two sets of coils. Um, nothing special about that. I did tap some of these. I don't know if you can see the taps through there. There's uh, taps along here. Uh, those are not used right now. I'm thinking about making a modification later, but if I do that, I'll, I'll make another video on that. Uh, okay, so uh, standard uh, earphone, nothing special there. Uh, these are all standard. This is just two brass washers with a stainless screw through it. Uh, same here, same here. The upper washer is bent a little bit so that it will grab the wires nicely, but outside of that there's nothing special. Just two washers and a screw here, here, here. Uh, these are fanny stock clips. Uh, construction note, do not solder with a part in place. Um, yeah, okay, so let's do a little bit of close-up and uh, we can uh, look at some more detail. This is the bottom of the radio. You can see the two towers right here. The towers are held on by two screws like this. These holes in the center were for another design which I skipped and, and went to and uh, did it another way. Uh, these holes down here hold on the coil. They hold on these pillow blocks right here. And that's pretty much it for the bottom. Let's talk about how the wiper arm attaches to this tower. You can see back here there's a one that's assembled. Uh, I've got a whole video on how to do this part right here. It's basically a copper tube that's been smashed around a loop of stainless, but if you want the detail I've got another video on that. And above it, you can see back here is a one that's assembled, is just a, uh, it's a brass washer. And above the brass washer is a piece of felt, which acts a little bit like a spring. And you can replace that with a spring, in fact. Then there's a stainless washer, and, and then there's another brass washer. The only reason the little brass washer is here is because the hole on the stainless is too big for the head of the screw. So you could do away with that if you have a smaller hole in your, in your top washer. But that's it, and it sits back in here, uh, as you can see, like that one back there. This is the ground connection, and it connects up to here. Let me show you how I did that. We'll zoom in a bit. The wire, you can just barely see, runs underneath this block.
around the other side, so it goes underneath the block, there's a groove in the bottom of the block, runs up the side, let me zoom out, up the side of the block in another in a groove, and then across, and then it's soldered to this bottom washer. This tower is connected down to this point in a similar way. You can see the wire runs here, goes underneath the block, comes up the back side, right there, goes uh, across the top, and is soldered onto the bottom brass washer. The right side tower, the wire comes out of here like we saw earlier. It just uh, gets pinched in between two brass washers. The upper washer, as I mentioned earlier, has been bent a little bit, just so the wires stay in there a little nicer. This is the diode. It's also connected here to the resistor and to the uh, one side of the earphone, and then again, that's the diode wire. So those three things connect here. And then on this side, you have the resistor, the earphone, and then it goes off to the coil. Uh, like this. So it goes in here and connects to the coil here. From the diode side, let's spin this around. There's one place I haven't talked about. Uh, here's the ground which we discussed earlier. Here's this copper colored fanny stock clip and it's the opposite side of the antenna part of the coil so the wire just runs underneath this pill block and attaches to the leftmost side of the big coil. Here. Before I get a lot of complaints, I have to say, YouTube will not let me play more than a couple seconds of music or whatever, or radio or other people's work without doing a takedown on my video. So, uh, I can give a couple seconds and that'll be it. Okay, maybe I can't uh, let you listen to these stations, but I can certainly show them to you. Here's the one we were just listening to on the oscilloscope. And what I typically do is I typically look for a, a station along here. Here's another one. And then I tune the antenna to get the maximum. Here you can see it's not very good. And as I get the antenna better, that's better. The bigger the signal, the better it is. Whoops, there it was. So that's really good right there. And again, I just tune this until I find a station that can be really weak, and then I use the antenna tuner to bring it in. You can do it the other way. You can actually use the antenna tuner to do some rough tuning and then tune it with this, but either way. Okay, well that's it. This is actually now my very favorite uh, crystal radio, and it uh, really works remarkably well. It's inexpensive to build, works very well, simple to use. Uh, it's kind of got it all. Okay, well that was it. I hope you found this useful and interesting in your home DIY crystal radio experimentation.